Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be building a powerful small form factor mini PC for gaming and AI using Framework's new main board. Basically, what we've got here is the motherboard from their Framework desktop. You can buy this separately from their website, Mini ITX Form Factor. It can be powered by any ATX power supply. You can go with an SFX if you want to. It's got that cooler pre-installed. And basically, what we're going to need to add here just to get it up and running is a fan, some storage, and a power supply. But of course, we want to put this into a small form factor case. And there's a ton of them on the market. I've kind of went back and forth and I have a couple laying around from small form factor builds that we do over here on the channel. So I figured we'd go ahead and put something together. But taking a look at the board itself, I mean, this is a really interesting little setup. The cooler that comes pre-installed is using a phase change thermal interface. The mounting system supports a 120 millimeter fan, and this can be powered by any regular ATX power supply. We've got a 24 pin and an eight pin connector right down here. It also has one X4 PCIe slot, two M.2 2280 slots. So we can add a bunch of storage. And if you wanted to add some Wi-Fi right here, we've got another little slot. But when it comes down to it, we've got a pretty powerful system here because this is powered by the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. This is a 128 gigabyte model. So we've got 128 gigabytes of RAM. We can dedicate up to 96 to the iGPU for LLMs if that's what you're going to be doing with the unit. But again, we want to put this into a small form factor PC case. What I've got here is the NWEN Showpan. This is the upgraded version with the 230 watt power supply. Now I've done some testing with the framework desktop by itself and the maximum I could get it to pull from the wall was 157 watts. So I think we're gonna be good to go with 230 here. Fingers crossed, but uh, I will be doing some testing once we get everything assembled. So with the case and the motherboard, we've almost got everything we need except for a fan. Now this does support a 120 millimeter fan and I've got some low profile units. Unfortunately, once I put the board in here and then a 120 millimeter fan on here like it's supposed to mount, we cannot put the top on the case. Now it's being blocked by the back of the uh, lid itself, as you can see. Now I was gonna go with the 90 millimeter fan and to tell you the truth, I think we'd be fine with the 90 millimeter, but I've got several of these low profile fans laying around. So I figured I'd go ahead and modify one real quick so we could actually make it work. Basically, I just created two extra mounting points here. So we're kind of sliding that fan forward on the heatsink itself. And with this setup here, we can now put the top on the case and it's not hitting the fan or anything like that. Again, this is the upgraded show pan. It gives us a little extra clearance and a bigger power supply. And once it's all together, it's actually a pretty clean little build. Another thing I was thinking about was adding two 90 millimeter fans here. Uh, they will fit on top of that heat sink, but then I'd have to come up with some kind of mounting bracket system. So I'm gonna go with this and see what it does. I've got a two terabyte 2280 M.2 SSD installed here. We'll go ahead and power this up. Got our fan spinning, not hitting that top case at all. I'm gonna be running Windows 11 Pro. And personally, I like setting my PCs up in a, kind of the vertical orientation like you see here. But if you wanted to with this show pan, you can actually set it on its side. So it's not gonna block that top off, get plenty of airflow through it. It's really up to you. Okay, so we've got this thing up and running. And as you can see, we've got that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. This system does have 128 gigabytes of RAM, but I've dedicated 64 to the iGPU here. You can do up to 96 gigs for the iGPU if you want to but I think just splitting it up for my use case scenario is gonna be more than enough for AI, light AI, which I do. And of course, gaming on this machine. Uh, we've also got the XDNA NPU and we're able to utilize this to generate images and videos. Uh, I've been messing around with this application for quite some time. It's specifically designed for AMD and the NPU to do some upscaling or we can generate completely on the NPU. But to tell you the truth, with this 8060S, generating videos and images is gonna be faster on this but we can definitely upscale with that NPU just to make use of it. So the one thing I wanted to see were just temps here and uh, so far not bad at all. We've got a maximum TDP of 120 watts. So we've got a boost up to 120, kind of comes down to around, you know, 100 watts, 99 right there while we're gaming. So kind of maxed out at 100 watts here. Temps look great, even though we've got that, uh, you know, it's just a thinner fan. It's not a smaller fan and we're in a smaller case here. 
but I don't think we're going to hit thermal throttle with this. The cooler they use here is absolutely amazing. We'll take a look at temps by the end of the video. But the first thing I wanted to do was check out a little bit of uh, AI image and video generation. So I'm going to bring this over here. And what I use is Amuse. It's just really easy to use. It's an AMD partner. So uh, a lot of stuff is optimized for this. We can go to expert mode and for image generation, I'm going to be using SD3 medium, AMD GPU optimized. We'll just go back to easy because obviously it's just easier to use here. I want to keep an eye on the GPU and the NPU uh, while generating images. And right down here, we've got AMD XDNA Super Resolution or AMD XDNA 2 Stable Diffusion. If I leave this checked, it's all going to work on the MPU, but like I mentioned, it's much faster with this 8060S. So we're going to disable this, but we will be upscaling at the end of the image using the MPU. So we'll do a robot unicorn fighting a Gundam. Uh, we'll just make one, see how fast it is. We'll do balanced. As soon as I hit generate, it's got to load the pipeline. So we're loading up that model right now. And we should do most of it on the GPU here with the XDNA 2 stable diffusion disabled. Yeah, so we've maxed out the GPU. Got 20 steps to go with this. But as soon as that last step kicks in and it needs to upscale, you'll see it hit up this NPU. And right down here, we've got our elapsed time. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Um, so a unicorn head on a Gundam. If I go into expert mode, I can set up some negative prompts, make it look a lot better. But with this, it took us 37.6 seconds. Upscale actually does look really nice. If I enable the XDNA2 stable diffusion, it's all going to work on the NPU. And we'll generate another one real quick. So it's going to have to load that pipeline again. And then we'll have our elapsed time at the end. But this should not do anything with that GPU while it's uh, generating that image for us. Yeah, there we go. So it's all on the NPU. So it took this one 77 seconds to create all on the NPU. So yeah, when disabling this, you're just going to get better performance out of this 8060S. But with this application, we also have a little bit of video generation. It's not super incredible, but uh, the fact that we can actually do it locally is still pretty cool. We can do up to six seconds and we'll do up to six seconds here. I'm going to do the same exact thing. A robot unicorn fighting a Gundam. We're going to go balanced. We only want one video here and we'll just see what this does. So it should just use the GPU. And there it is. So a six second video created on the iGPU took 165 seconds here. Uh, we can't create it all on the NPU, but uh, we could make it look a little better by going to quality or even expert mode, setting up a few of the negative prompts, or you could go through and use a totally different application like Comfy UI and just see much better results. It's really up to you. But this is just super easy to use. It's optimized out of the box for AMD. That's kind of why I test with it. Next thing I wanted to check out was LM Studio, and I've downloaded a model. You can go with anything you want. This is the one that I opted to use. It's a 14 gig model. We'll go ahead and load it in. And this is all local. I'm actually completely offline, as you can see down here. And we'll just go ahead and ask it, uh, how does a permanent magnet motor work? So with this, it's gonna hit that GPU up. So yeah, not too bad. 14.45 uh, tokens a second here, and you could always go with a different model. I've been messing around with Gemma on Intel chips, and it's really quick. This one's not too bad. I haven't messed around with it that much, but uh, for what we have here running on this iGPU, pretty awesome. Now, for NPU usage with this, I personally haven't found a way to do it with this chip yet. So if you've got any ideas, definitely let me know in the comments below. But I'll tell you, the main thing that I'm going to be doing on this mini PC is gaming. And in my initial video on the full desktop setup from Framework, we did test a bunch of games. This wasn't one of them. And if you want to see that video, I'll leave a link in the description. But what we've got here is God of War Ragnarok at 1440p high with no FSR. I was actually blown away that we'd be able to get away with this kind of frame right here with no FSR. And we're not using any kind of frame gen. I've got Afterburner up in the top left hand corner. You can see our TDP is right there at 94 to 95 watts. CPU temps look great here. 
Next up, Hogwarts Legacy, and I thought we'd get a little better performance out of this game. I'm at 1440p high, and I did have to set FSR to balance. With it set to quality, we were actually dipping under 60 FPS. Now you can see that our CPU temp is a bit higher here, but uh, it's not crazy at all. Again, the cooling system they have here is amazing for this Max Plus 395. Next up, we've got Ratchet and Clank ripped apart, 1440p, very high with no FSR. I'm not even using IGTI scaling built into the game here. We're seeing an average of around 84 FPS by the end of this run, and it's fully playable. And with all new games, I'd say 98% of them do support FSR frame generation. You can almost double the frame rate by enabling that, and it's really up to you. I mean, if you don't mind using it, you definitely could, but this is more than enough in my opinion. The final game we have here is Cyberpunk 2077. So out of the box like this, 1440p high with FSR set to quality, really playable experience. I knew we'd have a great time with this game just like it is, but I also wanted to test out some ray tracing on the Max Plus 395. So here it is at 1440p with ray tracing set to ultra. Now unfortunately we do need some frame generation, and this is by no means perfect. I would not really want to play it like this. I tried ray tracing overdrive and it really fell on its face, but just to show you here, ray tracing ultra, and I'm going to switch FSR to 3.0 instead of 2.1 to see if it looks a little better. I think 2.1 would probably be the way to go with uh, FSR 3.1 frame gen on, but ray tracing ultra here on an iGPU. If you wanted to, I mean, you could definitely get by playing it like this. Again, it's not perfect. Uh, it does kind of feel a little wonky here and there but it's pretty amazing that we're getting over 60 FPS with Ray Tracing Ultra on an iGPU. The last thing I wanted to talk about here were CPU temps uh, with this fan and case I opted to use. Side panel on the case. After all of my testing, I also ran Cinebench R24. We actually scored a 1,831, which is phenomenal for an AMD mobile chip. But the maximum CPU temperature that we saw through all of my testing was 74.6 degrees Celsius. So we're not getting anywhere near thermal throttle. And the fan I used here does spin up a little more than the uh, Framework desktop fan. You can opt for three over on their website, but it's still not a loud system at all. And we're way under thermal throttle. So temps look great here. Overall, I do think that this is a really neat little setup, especially for living room gaming. And this is about as small as we're gonna get something like this, unless you go with a, a cheaper HTPC case and a Pico power supply. But I mean, this is already super tiny and it basically fits anywhere. So that's gonna wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning a little more about the Framework desktop main board, I'll leave some links in the description. And if you wanna see Bazite running on the Framework desktop or even some more Windows gaming, Links for those videos are down below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.